This is The Ryan Marketing Show, and you're listening to episode 40 of 100. Today on the show, I have Angus Thompson from Thompson Suits in Hastings, Hawke's Bay. Great to have you on the show, Angus. Thank you very much. Great to be here. Now, you've got kind of a, um, an interesting business here because you're responsible for first impressions of guys, business people um, throughout Hawke's Bay and probably further afield around New Zealand. Uh, how do you go about keeping up with the latest trends versus you know, making sure that you have stock items that, that never go out of fashion? Absolutely. We, um, what we do is we indent a certain amount of our, our products. So we're looking at winter for next year, uh, 2017, and we're buying that now. Um, so you've got to make sure that you, what you buy is, is forward fashion. Um, then we also do rely on a stock support program from our suppliers. So that's um, availability of suits and trousers um, off the you know, from the from the uh, suppliers straight away, but that fashion focus is when you have to order approximately eight to twelve months in advance, and that's something a little bit different. And it is very important that you know you you only get one chance. You you don't get a second chance to make a good first impression. So that first impression, yeah, has to be uh, has to be spot on. And for that first impression, what um, what staple? pieces should every man have in their wardrobe um, to, to be available to for you know for dinner wear or for events or for even just going to work on a daily basis what are the what are the fundamentals good question so um, we always believe depending on your situation but a, a good suit in the wardrobe uh, two button single breasted um, neat fitting not too tight not too loose um, anything with uh, center vent out the back so uh, really is designed for um, twin vents out the back, single breasted. Seeing a little bit of double breasted coming in now, but that's still probably another six months to a year away. Um, also a nice clean white shirt. That will take you um, everywhere that uh, you know need to be dressed up as. And in regards to the casual side of thing, um, nice sort of denim, nice dressed denim with a open neck shirt. Okay. So that's a good, good fundamental base. Um, from what you're seeing in Hawke's Bay, do you see, um, you know, when you have people coming into the shop, are there particular things that, that continue to strike you as surprising um, of what people are wearing? Absolutely. So we get um, people that come in with twin pleat trousers. So they went out about 10 years ago, the big baggy um, trousers with the, with the pleats in the front. And when we... Um, get them to try on a plain front, sort of nicer fitting trouser. They, they're a little bit uh, reluctant to start with, but when they see them on, it's like, oh my goodness, should have had these on you know, years ago. Um, and also more of the sort of slimmer fitting suits as well. Um, gone are the boxy shaped suits that sort of hang on you like a sack. They're all a lot more fitting now. So when people get those on for the first time, they're a little bit unsure of it but once they see it in the mirror and sit down their uh, wise partners see it yeah they certainly uh, follow that follow that trend and does that trend still apply um, for all the different body shapes out there or would there be certain circumstances where those boxier um, shapes do still apply not really We're, we do have um, about six different styles that are off the rack for suits um, talking about suits here that will cover 95% of the male population. So the guys that are slightly bigger built, um, we have slightly fuller fitting suits, but it's still a nice, nice look. It's not doesn't hang off them like like the sack. Okay, so if they're nearby their wardrobe right now, and looking through and doing a bit of an audit, what should they be immediately reviewing and potentially replacing? Um, so in their jackets, anything double breasted throw out. Um, anything that sort of hangs off the shoulders or um, is really full around the waist, um, get that out of there. Come in and see us. If you're not sure about it, bring it into us and we can say that's still okay, you know, you can get away with that or maybe time to give that to hospice and 
update the wardrobe a little bit more. Right. So comfortable doesn't necessarily mean fashionable. Correct. Yeah. Um, but by the same token, if they've got a um, you know fa favorite blazer or suit, can you readjust some of them, or if it's been made, is, is that kind of that? Um, we can take them in to a certain extent. So through the waist, um, take them in by approximately eight centimeters. Um, in the shoulders, uh, that's somewhere where we don't really like touching. Once you touch the sh shoulders, you can always tell it's been sort of altered. But through through the body, yeah, we can certainly adjust that. Okay. Mm. Now let's talk a little bit about the the business itself. Uh, so Thompson Suits has been around for some time, almost. Well, it's 1957, so that's, what, 59 years? 59 years, so big 60th next year in May, so big celebration there. And this, certainly the times have changed. Um, 25 years ago there were 21 menswear stores in Hastings alone. Wow. And now there's only two owner-operators, and then you've got the, the chain stores of uh, the likes of Helen Steins and far, um, Farmers. So what we're seeing is the supplies that we deal with haven't got as many um, shops to uh, sell to so they're diminishing as well um, but the the type of um, the type of product that people are buying has certainly changed over the over the years as well mm. you must have had some um, you know had to fend off some pretty serious competition over the decades or you know the the Thompson family um, is there any one in particular that that stands out as a moment where you know that you were you were under threat or under challenge, and you, know, you saw your way through it. Um, n not that I know of. There has been n not really a rivalry as such, but a friendly rivalry, because uh, my grandfather, who started the business back in 1957, he had been working for Colin Blackmore or Blackmores um, prior to that for 20 years, and then decided to up and open this store, and so there's been that friendly rivalry between the two. And I think Blackmore's closed down in 1992. So that's a win then? It, it is a win, <laughs> but you never never like to see another re, um, men's retailer go down. Um, we always like the competition. It keeps us honest, and it's always good to be able to um, talk with them to see what's happening. You know, if they need help, you know, if they need any stock from us, we're happy to give it to them and vice versa. I guess being in an industry where it's not just about the fabric or the product, it's as much about the relationship and the service you get from someone when you are getting your suit or, or coming in. Um, you, do you uh, tend to have um, those relationships with customers where you know um, you know all the, the key milestones in their lives because they tend to be the ones that they're wearing suits to, for example? Absolutely. We, um, we do a couple of schools for the uniforms, which is Heroworth and Lindisfarne, and we sit, watch them sort of grow up through the through their school years, and then they've got the school balls, and then they uh, come come through us for their wedding suits, and so after the wedding, then they get their their jobs, so they come in for their first suit as well. So I do see that sort of continuation, which has been really good too. That's just sparked a memory for me actually. I, I think I've come into this shop for my school uniform for Heroworth. Oh yes, yes. Um, I think that was one of my first memories actually of, of being in Thompson suits. Yeah. And was it a good memory? Um, I believe it was. Um, I was excited to go to school, yes. and uh, I think I was. Jeez, how well, would I would have must have been only about ten or eleven years old. Yeah. Um, but even back then, I think um, the importance of looking good and uh, it has an impact on how other people perceive you, particularly what we've just been talking about with first impressions. Absolutely. Um, so it's suits aren't just for um, for business, they can be for fashion. And you know, looking on your site, you've got um, two of the younger generation bringing in their influence with Ben Graham and Murray Price. Um, how have you seen uh, what they've brought to the business change um, what you offer? Before um, Ben and Murray arrived, we had a couple of very long-serving um, staff. Uh, Bruce Georgie, who'd been who'd been here 28 years, um, he's just recently retired, and John Darrow, who'd been here for 44 years. Wow! And my father, Mike, who'd, who's still working here, and he's going to be his 50th anniversary in November. Um, so there was that old-school um, thought of old-school fashion, old-school sort of uh, way of life as well. Um, so the, the young guys have certainly sparked up Thompson Suits, brought the new fashion forward, which is brilliant. Um, there's a few pieces of clothing that have come in and I've been 
bit un, unsure of. Um, and sure enough, they go out the door um, to the to the younger guys. Um, uh, talking about competition, we had um, Hallensteins from down the road. They didn't really do much in suits for a long time, and then all of a sudden they've been very big in suits. Um, not to the same quality as what we've got. And what we've found is that the younger generation have bought their suit from there, worn it a couple of times and think, I look pretty good in this. But then now they're looking for something a little bit better. So that's actually helped us um, in the longer term. So the, the younger, younger guys getting dressed up, enjoying how they're looking because they can afford the, the sort of the cheaper suits and then um, come down to us and get something slightly better. That's a smart insight because um, often competitors see, are seen as the competition, but competitors can actually be your friends, particularly if they've got large marketing budgets like many uh, nationwide franchises do in re-educating a, a new market on a particular product. And you know, even if it is the low-end polyester suit, at least someone's wearing a suit yep. and then they know that that particular genre is for them. Um, do you find with... Um, particularly with uh, the the twenty somethings, thirty somethings, that you're you know you're competing for dollars outside fashion because there are all these other shiny objects that that people can buy nowadays. Definitely, um, back sort of twenty years ago, the uh, the household would have one TV, sort of one car, one washing machine, not many computers around. These days, everyone needs the latest iPhone, needs the latest Samsung computers, laptops, tablets. Um, and also with the television, cars, um, so spending habits have changed um, very much. Um, so it's not just going into the clothing shop because you've got a bit of spare money after you've done all the, all the main purchasing and for the household. Now, yeah, a lot of that money goes elsewhere. I guess from a, a gender perspective, um, women still appreciate a man that's well-dressed uh, and probably more so than uh, what phone they're carrying in their pocket um, and for some uh, groups of people that may, may be more important still. Absolutely. Um, we get a lot of women coming in here buying for their husbands or the husbands would come in or boyfriends would come in, have a look at something and be unsure about it. The, the wife or the girlfriend will come in and go, yeah, you need that. <laughs> Try this on as well. And so she does a lot of the dressing, um, much to the guy's dismay because he had that sort of iPhone item. But um, uh, the, the women certainly appreciate that look. Now, on the technology side of things, um, you know, purchasing behaviour has certainly moved online and is continuing to grow. Uh, what's your take on um, selling uh, fashion and, and clothing wear online? We believe that there is a, um, a gap in the market for that. Um, what we find is a lot of our customers do a lot of search online, so they'll They'll research suits, jackets, trousers, shirts, um, but most of them still want to feel it because yeah. I think a lot of people have been caught with seeing something online, buying it, comes in, it either doesn't fit or doesn't feel very nice, doesn't stand up to what, what they perceived they were going to get. Yet when they can do the research online, come into a store, try it on, make sure it fits, make sure the fabric's right, and then get the um, the sort of the... Um, the um, what I'm trying to say is um, <laughs> our advice, basically. So get get our advice um, to be to, to make sure that they get what they're uh, what they're after. Because there are so many details you can get right, where it's the the cuffs or the collar or the inside lining or all those different things. Um, certainly helps to to have some advice from someone that does that on a daily basis, day in day out. Absolutely. Does that then mean that for the e-commerce side of things uh, that you are limited just to the Hawke's Bay market or once you have uh, measurements can you then supply throughout New Zealand? Absolutely. So we do sell online as well. Uh, we do recommend people coming into the store to try on um, but in saying that we do send to Australia, um, England and we've got quite a few customers that are actually based in Auckland, Wellington that come on their holidays to here and then either email or give us a call and we can send things to them because we've got their sizes and what they've bought on record. That's quite smart actually because uh, I guess in Hawke's Bay you've got a little bit more time, uh, it's a very central location here, uh, you can go in for multiple fittings whereas in Auckland that may not be the case, it may be a, a few hours in traffic just for those short fittings for the adjustments. Definitely and uh, the people that come from Wellington and Auckland they say 
there's not a store like this in in Auckland or Wellington. Um, up there, you've either got a suit shop or a shirt shop or a shoe shop, um, and this here just feels like a nice, relaxed atmosphere. They don't feel pushed. Um, they've got time to look around and try things on. Well, there's something unique, I think, about family businesses in that um, you get to have all this um, built-up intellectual knowledge over not just years but decades and generations, and that in some of the bigger cities is far harder to come by. Yeah, definitely. Um, how have have you and your family managed to keep the, this business going for so long through so many different uh, ebbs and flows? Very good question that. Um, our main priority is um, customer service and the quality of product. So the, the product that we have in store, we stand behind it um, and we generally only deal with the suppliers that stand behind their product as well. So if um, someone comes in and says this hasn't um, worn as what I'd thought, um, we have a look at it and generally we make the call, they're not good enough, here's a replacement and we send the, uh, the faulty product back to the supplier um, who, who credited it. And there hasn't been many a time, there hasn't been many times when uh, we've had to wear the cost. There's been the odd, odd occasion, but um, we certainly do look to see if it's a good client, then no questions asked. Um, and we, and that's how we basically stand by what we sell. Um, the other one is that um, customer service where we try not to push the customer, but we help the customer buy. So more on the education side. Absolutely. Rather than saying, this looks great on you, whether it does or doesn't, because yeah. when they walk out of here and wear that shirt or suit, someone will come up to them and say, oh, where'd you get that suit from? It doesn't fit very well. That's not what we're about. We want to say, people to say, where'd you get that suit from? That looks great. I'm, I won't have to go into that store. Excellent. Um, how do you get that message out to a wider, wider audience? Or what are the marketing channels do you operate that, that helps you share that message? Um, probably the best one is word of mouth. So uh, the old adage of one happy customer will tell two, two friends and one unhappy customer will tell two, uh, 100 friends. Um, but yeah, word of mouth is very important for us. Um, but we do deal with the local paper, um, the local radio stations, also with the um, with online social media, that's certainly um, making a big, big way for us. For 57 years, we haven't really touched that online side of things, um, and we've just sort of started that in the last sort of six months, um, pushing forward, uh, which has certainly had a very positive impact. We also do uh, direct marketing as well, direct mailing. So you really got the whole marketing mix there. Mm. Um, and I think that's always important because marketing is about layers uh, and knowing where your customers are. So um, is there much measurement that goes on or do you just put that in the mix and say, look, if we put enough out there, we know we're at least going to have awareness? We've done a couple of surveys where we can tell what radio station has been listened to and, um, I mean, they also come back with this is a demographic of that station and that station, but we also like to ask our customers you know, where they've heard about us or, you know, why did they come in today type thing. Um, the direct mail certainly um, has an instant um, sort of reward. So they, they come in and say, we've got something in the mail. So you know straight away that that's worked. Or if they uh, if no one comes in after we've done something like that, then that's been a, been a bit of a failure. Um, social media, there's that's probably the easiest one to... Um, to find out if that's worked because of the amount of information you can get back from it. It's really the radio and the newspaper which is a, a very um, hit and miss. Yeah, it's weird. a black box really. You, you, you know that only half is effective, you just don't know which half. Yeah, absolutely. So um, Now as we, we sit here in the Thompson Suits store, uh, upstairs you've got this amazing board of uh, photos of, of all the different incarnations of Thompson Suits. Um, What's in store next after, the, you know, what's the next set of photos that are going to go up here? Well, there's going to be, the next set will be my father's 50th anniversary and retirement. 
So that's um, that's going to be a big celebration for him or a commiseration. He's not sure yet whether he <laughs> wants to retire. Um, and then next year is our big 60th. Um, been in business for 60 years, which I think is um, pretty fantastic in this day and age. Um, and then from there, certainly we have a few things planned, but they were, uh, they're under wraps at this moment. Still secret. Yeah. Excellent. Well, you're right. I mean, almost 60 years in business, particularly in the retail sector and in fashion, I think is uh, you know, highly commendable. And I look forward to seeing where you take the business once uh, your father does retire. And um, good luck in the future. Thank you very much. Thanks for your time. Fantastic. If you like this episode, remember to subscribe for free on iTunes. Simply search for The Ryan Marketing Show in the iTunes Store.